Father God, Jesus Christ and Holy Spirit, I thank you for this beautiful day that you have given to us today. Thank you that your mercies are new every morning and I just ask that you would help us to to get untangled from any of the sin that we've been caught up in. I pray that you would discipline us in whatever way that is required so that we are holy as you are holy. Help us to, to keep our eyes on Jesus Christ so that we can be kept from stumbling, my Lord, I pray. Just be with us and be glorified in our lives today and be honoured, I pray, Father. Open our hearts and teach us, challenge us, encourage us. In your precious and holy name, I pray. Amen. Hebrews chapter 12. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a huge crowd of witnesses to the life of faith, let us strip off every weight that slows us down, especially the sin that so easily trips us up, and let us run with endurance the race God has set before us. We do this by keeping our eyes on Jesus, the champion who initiates and perfects our faith. Because of the joy awaiting him, he endured the cross, disregarding its shame. Now he is seated in the place of honour beside God's throne. Think of all the hostility he endured from sinful people. Then you won't become weary and give up. After all, you have not yet given your lives in your struggle against sin. And have you forgotten the encouraging words God spoke to you as his children? He said, my child, don't make light of the Lord's discipline and don't give up when he corrects you. For the Lord disciplines those he loves and he punishes each one he accepts as his child. As you endure this divine discipline, remember that God is treating you as his own children. Who ever heard of a child who is never disciplined by its father. If God doesn't discipline you as he does all of his children, it means that you are illegitimate and are not really his children at all. Since we respected our earthly fathers who disciplined us, shouldn't we submit even more to the discipline of the father of our spirits and live forever? For our earthly Fathers disciplined us for a few years, doing the best they knew how. But God's discipline is always good for us, so that we might share in his holiness. No discipline is enjoyable while it is happening. It's painful. But afterward, there will be a peaceful harvest of right living for those who are trained in this way. So take a new grip with your tired hands and strengthen your weak knees. Mark out a straight path for your feet, so that those who are weak and lame will not fall but become strong. Work at living in peace with everyone, and work at living a holy life, for those who are not holy will not see the Lord. Look after each other, so that none of you fails to receive the grace of God. Watch out that no poisonous root of bitterness grows up to trouble you, corrupting many. Make sure that no one is immoral or godless like Esau, who traded his birthright as the firstborn son for a single meal. You know that afterwards, when he wanted his father's blessing, he was rejected. It was too late for repentance, even though he begged with bitter tears. You have not come to a physical mountain, to a place of flaming fire, darkness, gloom, and a whirlwind, as the Israelites did at Mount Sinai. For they heard an awesome trumpet blast, 
and their voice so terrible that they begged God to stop speaking. They staggered back under God's command. If even an animal touches the mountain, it must be stoned to death. Moses himself was so frightened at the sight that he said, I am terrified and trembling. No, you have come to Mount Zion, to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to countless thousands of angels in a joyful gathering. You have come to the assembly of God's firstborn children, whose names are written in heaven. You have come to God himself, who is the judge over all things. You have come to the spirits of the righteous ones in heaven, who have now been made perfect. You have come to Jesus, the one who mediates the new covenant between God and people, and to the sprinkled blood, which speaks of forgiveness instead of crying out for vengeance like the blood of Abel. Be careful that you do not refuse to listen to the one who is speaking, for if the people of Israel did not escape when they refused to listen to Moses, the earthly messenger, we will certainly not escape if we reject the one who speaks to us from heaven. When God spoke from Mount Sinai, his voice shook the earth. But now he makes another promise. Once again I will shake not only the earth but the heavens also. This means that all of creation will be shaken and removed so that only unshakable things will remain. Since we are receiving a kingdom that is unshakable, let us be thankful and please God by worshipping him with holy fear and awe. For our God is a devouring fire. This is the word of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord Jesus, thank you that for the joy set before you, you endured the cross and all its horrors. Thank you that the joy that was set before you was the fact that you would rise again and sit at the right hand of God and that we, your brothers and sisters, would be saved. I thank you, Jesus, for that joy you had, ultimately that joy of being in the kingdom of heaven. And I thank you that, thank you that you went through it, Jesus. Thank you that because of that we can look to you and we can gaze at you and you will help us in our temptations, in our trials, in our hurts. God, it challenges me to remember, this book does, that you are earth-shaking. You know, it's a real challenge and it's a real... I think it's a real encouragement and a push to, to live to please you when we know that Moses was terrified of you. Thank you that it helps us to, to live our lives not in sin when we realise who you are. And that doesn't mean that if we make errors or think and do and say the wrong thing that we need to beat ourselves over the head because you died for Jesus and your blood covers every sin. But do help us to know that we can't just not care about the things that we do and think, oh, we're forgiven so we can do what we want. No, we need to honour you, Father God, who descended onto Mount Sinai in that dark cloud and that whirlwind. But help us also to remember your gentleness and your patient endurance, Father. Your patient, you patiently enduring our selfishness and our, the times that we don't give you enough time in our lives. Thank you for that. And I do praise you that we will worship you on Zion. We'll worship you in the kingdom of heaven and we'll worship you as heaven come down, comes down to earth. Help us to worship you and honour you, my precious God, in our lives and to look with excitement at that future day when we will be forever with you in that wonderful presence. 
when the things of this world that are shakeable, the things that are temporary, will be gone, and the eternal will be there forever and ever, us with our new bodies, healed from all pain and physical sickness and suffering and tears. Praise you, God. Let us live in the light of those things. In your precious and wonderful name I pray, God. Amen.